Hi, and welcome back to our videos on CSS. In this series of videos, we've been looking at how to apply CSS styling to data tables inside of an HTML document. And we've been using Dreamweaver for our exercises. I'm going to go ahead now and um, work with some class styles in this table. Now, functionally, if a tag style will do the same thing as a class style for a table, it really doesn't matter which one you use. Both will work equally as well. Class styles, though, have the advantage of being able to be applied in as many different places and as many different ways as you can. So they're much more flexible than tag styles. So oftentimes when um, I'm working with things like background colors and borders and things like that, I'll create class styles and use those as opposed to tag styles. Again, if I created, let's say I created a uh, style that gave a bottom thick border to something, I could just as easily apply that class style to a row in my table as I could to a heading. So let's go ahead and start looking at this. I'm going to go ahead and I've removed all of the existing CSS from the table with the exception of just some basic items like the width and the margin. And I've also put the border collapse property on the table. And that's essential to using uh, borders. You have to uh, collapse the borders on your table if you want these to appear. And we saw that in our um, last video. And then I've also applied just some padding and changed the text alignment to my THs and TDs. So no real formatting, just some simple setup. So let's go ahead and create some class styles now. I'm going to go ahead and create a class style that will outline something in a thin black border. So I'm going to call this uh, Thin Outline. Always name your style something that makes sense. Um, so I have Thin Outline there, and I'm going to go ahead and use the border property, and I'm going to say this is going to be one pixel black solid border. And I'm going to go ahead and close that style. So I've got my first class style. Now let's go ahead and apply that to this table. Let's say I want an outline all the way around my table. I'm going to come in here to my source code and come over to my table tag. And I'm going to go ahead and select the class attribute. And there's that style that I just created, the thin outline. I'll go ahead and select that and save it. And when I click over here to refresh my live view, you're now going to see that I have a border around my table. Now let's go ahead and create a couple more styles. I'm going to come back in here to my CSS and hit enter. And let's say I want a couple of different styles for bottom borders. I want a thick bottom border, and I also want a dashed bottom border style. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and do thick bottom for my style. And I'm going to go ahead and say this border is going to be 4 pixels black and again solid. And then I want that dashed border. And actually I made a mistake here. I just did border. I want a border on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and correct that right there. And now I'm going to go ahead and name this one dashed thin bottom. And I'm going to go ahead and do border bottom. And again, this is going to be a one pixel black, but dashed is going to be the style. And then I'll go ahead and close that style off. So now we've got a couple of um, additional styles. And actually, let's go ahead and do one more. I want to do a solid thin bottom border. So I'm going to go ahead and do solid thin bottom. Border bottom, one pixel, black, solid. And once you've been writing this enough, you'll come up with your own sort of naming convention for these styles. So as you go from project to project, you'll remember what the different style names mean uh, for you. And you can just simply add those to your new projects. So now I'm going to come in here to source code, and I'm going to go ahead and place a thick bottom border on my header area here. So I'm going to go into my T head region, and I'm going to go ahead and use the class attribute. And there are all my, my borders, including thick bottom. So I'll go ahead and select that. 
save it, click, and there is a thick border on the bottom of that particular row. And now let's go ahead and put a thin dashed border in between the last row and the, um, the footer content here. Now since we did bottom borders, we're going to apply it to the last row. If you had decided just for whatever reason to create top borders, which work just as well as bottom borders, um, you would have placed it on the uh, T foot region. So I'm going to come down here and this is the column or this is the row that starts with Western right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click in my TR and again select the class attribute and there's that dashed thin bottom border. Save it, click over here and there is my thin dash bottom border. So you can see how easy it is to create uh, border styles using um, CSS and then apply them to your table. And again, these styles, because they're classes, aren't limited to just being applied to a table. I'm going to go ahead and scroll up to the top here and let's say I want a heading on the page. I'm going to go ahead and open an H1 tag and the class attribute that I'm going to go ahead and select is going to be um, solid thin bottom. So this H1 is going to have a solid thin bottom border on it. And I'll go ahead and just type tables and then close my H1 and save it. And when I click over here, you're going to see that there's my heading and there's that thin bottom border below my H1. So these are very flexible styles to create. And uh, a lot of people create just a style sheet of different um, border and background options and classes. Um, and then just copy and paste those from project to um, project. And obviously if you were doing this, you would go into your H1 tag and apply some different formatting to that as well. So this is another way of having a couple different styles applied, both the tag style, whatever you decide for that, as well as a class style that's been applied to um, that. And then the last thing I'll remind you of is remember you can apply multiple class styles to a single element. And we'll see more about how to do that in our next video.